Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this very intriguing star system located approximately 3700 light years away from us that was recently discovered to possess a very intriguing star shape or a very intriguing structure that's sometimes referred to as a streamer, in this case caused by something, most likely another star system, passing extremely close pretty much through the entire protoplanetary disk. In the process, creating something really interesting and something we've never seen before. As a matter of fact, this is a pretty rare event, comparable to detecting a lightning strike in the middle of nowhere. And so let's discuss some of the details about this event, what this means for this particular star system, and also compare this to some of the previous discoveries from very similar star systems and from our own solar system as well. But I guess let's start with the actual way that the scientists were able to discover this. So a lot of these recent discoveries in regards to planetary disks or very early star systems usually sort of come from one single telescope, the ALMA, also known as the Atacama Large Millimeter Array. And on their website you can actually see the 360 picture of what all of this looks like and how impressively large this particular uh, telescope formation is. As you can see there are quite a lot of various uh, millimeter array antenna that are essentially used to detect these extremely far away stars and also investigate various protoplanetary disks that have been discovered in the past decade or so. As a matter of fact, many of these iconic images you might have seen before, they're all from the same telescope, this is all from ALMA. And basically that's what it's good at. It's really good at creating these incredible images of far away but somewhat young stars. All of these stars are still forming and some of them are still actually not even true stars yet either. They're essentially pre-main sequence stars that didn't even start nuclear reaction on the inside yet. And they all possess these very intriguing protoplanetary disks and rings along with them. And in one of the previous videos we already discussed how this particular telescope helped the scientists identify how various types of planets might form in various types of star systems, including answering the question of why there doesn't seem to be any super Earths or certain types of planets in the solar system. The video for this should be popping up somewhere right there or it can be found in the description below. But some of the observations from ALMA have also discovered these unusual protoplanetary disks that seem to possess various stretch structures. Today they are usually referred to as streamers. And at least one such star is this one right here known as Z Canis Majoris. It's located around 3700 light years away from us and it's a relatively young star, it's probably around 300,000 years old. And one of the most intriguing parts of this star was of course this unusual streamer present in this region, but also the fact that it's basically two stars, it's actually a binary system, with both objects not truly being stars yet. These are still extremely young objects with essentially protoplanetary disks that are still developing and that are generally quite misshapen and have a lot of activity on the inside. Nevertheless, the presence of the streamer here is kind of difficult to explain. And this is actually pretty long, it's over 2000 astronomical units, or 2000 times the distance of planet Earth to the Sun. And some of the initial explanations suggested that this could be some kind of a molecular outflow from the star system. Basically suddenly the mass started to somehow disappear from the star, possibly driven by some kind of an eruption or possibly produced by the interaction with the other star. It could also have been caused by some kind of a capture of a massive object from another star system or from somewhere nearby, which suddenly created this unusual formation. But this new study did a slightly more thorough analysis using higher resolutions and specifically they looked in the region somewhere right here, discovering in the process that there was something else going on in this region. At a distance of about 4700 astronomical units away from the star system, they've discovered a binary pair that very likely passed through there and essentially just gravitationally stretched the formation that was previously resembled something like this instead. It was probably a more circular circumplanetary disk. And so it was actually an accidental discovery of a what the scientists refer to as a point source right at the end of the streamer, thus explaining its most likely origins. With this artistic representation sort of giving us an idea of what some of this might look like. And this is actually a really intriguing discovery because before this we've only had computer simulations showing us what might happen if a star system passes through another star system. The scientists have never seen this in an actual star system practically happening in real time. And because a lot of the stuff right here that's essentially planetary material, this naturally will somehow disrupt or potentially change the planetary formation inside the binary. 
But what exactly happens and of course how this affects the star, that's a question we cannot answer right now. It is, however, a very intriguing question for, I guess, several reasons. One of those reasons is because we recently talked about the star system known as Fu Orionis. And as you might have learned from that video if you watched it, or you can learn by watching it somewhere right there, essentially this star experienced some kind of an outburst due to a close passage from another star. And this particular passage in this star system caused Fu Orionis to increase in luminosity, to increase in brightness and in heat for at least several decades. This, in effect, will most likely change the planetary formation and dramatically change the composition of various materials by completely transforming the materials these planets will be made from, very likely mixing a lot of the stuff simply because of the motion of the gas, also dramatically changing some of the materials by heating it up to extreme temperatures, and just generally perturbing a lot of the protoplanetary stuff causing the actual composition of the planets to change dramatically compared to, for example, some of these other protoplanetary disks that do not experience these events. And more importantly, as you might have learned from that other video, as we've learned from Fu Orionis, these types of very powerful flashing events, or basically when the star becomes very hot for a short time, can end up producing what we find right here in our own star system, in our own solar system chondrules. These chondrules are present in the vast majority of asteroids we discover in the solar system, and one of the explanations for these is actually a flash event from the early solar system when the sun was very young. What could have caused this? Well, so far, all of the signs are pointing at something like this. And as you can see from the image again, this does actually end up mixing the material and ends up producing protoplanetary material that might not exist in a typical star system. And this, in effect, may explain why our solar system seems to possess extremely rare planets compared to all of the other exoplanets we've discovered. We have some terrestrial planets, we have some gas giants, but we don't really have any super-Earths, any mini-Neptunes, or a lot of these other planets we've discovered that seem to be absolutely everywhere. Why do we not have them is of course a question that's been bugging scientists for the past few years. And one of the potential and so far most likely answers seems to imply that something very, very similar might have happened to the solar system long, long time ago. With, I guess, major difference being the fact that this is a binary system, so here things are already quite different, whereas our solar system has only one single star. And so whether we had another star and whether that star also caused some kind of an interruption or disruption is a different question that we have no answers to. But just the fact that the scientists were able to identify the star system where there's clear signs of a disruption because of a passage of what seems to be another binary star system, with all of this most likely happening not so long ago, is actually a pretty incredible discovery. It means that a lot of simulations that the scientists conducted before, first of all, were most likely correct, but can also now be compared even further in order to see what we might have missed. More importantly, this may also, to some extent, finally explain why this particular star has actually gone through some really extreme changes in luminosity in the last few years. For example, this peak right here is still not really understood or explained, neither is this one or that one. But I'm sure that after this particular study, a lot of other teams might find something else really intriguing about the star system that might have been missed in this study, because as of now this is basically one of two known star systems where it's officially been confirmed that something disturbed the star, with this one being specifically interesting because of the streamer that it created. With the other system, of course, being Fu Orionis. Well, anyway, so on that note, pretty interesting discovery, a very interesting and intriguing study, but I'm sure even more interesting things will be discovered in the future. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.